one. I brought my lucky robot this time, so I think it's going to go real great. Um, in, in the spirit of sharing embarrassing moments together, I thought I'd show you a photo from my first robotics project nine years ago. Some people uh, were asking me at lunch uh, how I got into robotics, um, and uh, it was kind of random. My freshman year at MIT, I just went home one day and I said, hey guys, I need a campus job. And someone was like, do you want to work in a robotics lab? I'm like, OK, and then ended up spending the next six years of my life there. So uh, yeah, <laughs> with Cynthia Brazil in the Media Lab. But anyway, right, so robot theater, Marilyn Monroe bot, the, you know, the union of robots and entertainment. So this was uh, my second project. We installed it in the Smithsonian Cooper Hewitt Design Museum in New York. It was a field of robotic flowers that was supposed to represent the potentials of charismatic machines going into the future. Um, this was another uh, installation a couple years ago in, in Florence. Uh, it was like an interactive sculpture and a registration pace, uh, space of a, a fashion design trade show. Show me a postcard. And this was my master's thesis, this uh, uh, bear covered in capacitive sensors, really into sensing the world, um, but uh, yeah, that would try to decode symbolic human gestures like hugs or tickling or head pats so it could communicate you, with you in a more natural social way. And then there's this robot um, who I've been using for my first investigations into robot theater. So robot in the wild. Um, so this is in Washington Square Park. Uh, were any of you here last year to see Casey speak about tweenbots? Yeah, pretty cool, right? So actually, in honor of her, I did my first performance in Washington Square Park as well, because I knew they were friendly to robots. <laughs> I gave people some surveys afterwards, and we got some unexpected results. I thought this guy was writing me up for a ticket for doing it like a un like a performance without permission, and it turned out he was drawing uh, a picture of the robot. But anyway, uh, so basically what I had people do um, was I made these postcards of different neighborhoods of New York. West Village, Brooklyn, Times Square. I figure some of us aren't from New York, so I'll do Times Square. Robot demo. Times Square, home of the tourists. A lot of those in New York. Well now, any of you guys tourists? Sure. My oh my. New York City gets a special breed of tourists all of its own. Yep. You know the ones. They love New York shirts, have ratty old backpacks. And, worst of all, they're cheerful. Here goes nothing. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Heather, help me with my map, will you? I had a metro map. Cape. <laughs> Superhero. Well, let's see now. You all been to Times Square. Have you seen the naked cowboy? He plays the guitar in his underwear and a cowboy hat. Sorry, I forgot those props today, but he moves like this. Yep. Just shaking his booty. Tourists love that guy. Yeah, you've heard it. Flash, 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 flash. Well, not all tourists stay safely in Times Square. For example, I ran into a tourist in a one of a kind deli down in Soho. This lady walks into the deli and loudly asks if they have another branch in Midtown near Times Square because that would be much more convenient to the bus tour she wants to take. Shopkeeper doesn't miss a beat. Sure, lady, what day's your bus? Friday. Great. We will relocate on Thursday. Smiling with self-satisfied appreciation, the lady prances out of the store. Do not be the tourist. But not all tourists stay safely in Times Square. A lot of them even pretend to be New Yorkers. They are sneaky. Well, my trusting audience, I have a confession. I am a tourist too. I've only been in the city a few months. And I am French. I know. I am sorry if you feel betrayed. But I am actually comfortable with my condition. In fact, 
I am such a devout tourist that I have two video cameras installed on my face. Soon there will be a robot feature film coming your way from this very spot. I am the director, the head of photography, and the actor, all in one. Well, perhaps I am getting ahead of myself. Even a robot can dream. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> hey. Cool. So, um, oh, I guess I don't need this anymore. I think that robots can learn a lot from failure. I'm really hoping that uh, people give great feedback, telling them when they're not funny, what works, when it needs to move more, move less. And I hope that it can also start tracking you to try to understand how it could, you know, change up its performance midway and uh, become increasingly charismatic. I think this is really important um, in terms of integrating robots into everyday human environments in the kind of applications that we've seen in science fiction like throughout the last, you know, since the invention of the movies and television and books. And uh, I think this is a cool robot called Keep On, um, made by one of my talented collaborators on the Rube Goldberg machine, Marek um, Mikulowski. And uh, another project I did with Chris, my other collaborator, is uh, Robot Census. So we're ready for the future when humans are, I mean, when robots are in our everyday life. <laughs> and if you have a robot, <laughs> and if you have a robot, please tell us about it at uh, robotcensus.org. The future. Thank you. <laughs>